Hello everyone, my name is Ashish and you are watching another WebGuy YouTube channel and today we are going to start CSS tutorial series. After learning HTML, CSS is the next step in your journey of front-end development. CSS is the language that describes the style of an HTML document. So without wasting any time, let's get started. If you have not yet subscribed to our channel, please hit the subscribe button and also the notification bell icon so that you don't miss any of our videos. CSS stands for Cascading Style Sheets. CSS describes how HTML elements are to be displayed on desktop, mobiles or in any other media. It is used to define styles for all your web pages including the design, layout, variations in display for different devices and screen sizes. CSS is a very powerful language. It saves us a lot of work. It can control the layout of multiple web pages all at once. In fact, we can also display a single HTML page in different styles just by changing the CSS file attached to it. Let's see some examples to understand and appreciate the power of CSS. On the left hand side, you can see the HTML web pages without the CSS file attached to it. On the right hand side, you can see the same web page when the CSS is applied. Now let's see how we can add CSS to our HTML web pages. There are three ways of inserting a style sheet into a HTML document. First, inline CSS, internal CSS and external CSS. We have already seen the glimpses of using inline CSS in our basic HTML tutorial series by using the style attribute. The style attribute can contain any CSS property. An inline style may be used to apply a unique style for a single element. However, the inline style loses many advantages of the style sheet. So this method is rarely used. The internal style is defined inside the style element inside the head section. An internal style sheet may be used on very small websites or if one single HTML page has a unique style. At last, we have external CSS. With an external style sheet, you can change the look of an entire website just by changing one file. External style sheets are defined within the link element inside the head section of an HTML page. An external style sheet can be written in any text editor and must be saved with a .css extension. The external CSS file does not contain any HTML tags. This is the most preferred method of using CSS in a website and we will be using this method for all our further examples. Now let's acquaint ourselves with the CSS syntax. A CSS rule set consists of a selector and a declaration block. The selector points to the HTML element you want to style. More on it in a little while. The declaration block contains one or more declarations separated by a semicolon. Each declaration includes a CSS property name and a value separated by a colon. A CSS declaration always ends with a semicolon and the declaration blocks are surrounded by the curly braces. We just saw that the CSS selectors are used to find or select the HTML elements you want to style. There are multiple types of CSS selectors. The first is the CSS element selector. The element selector selects HTML elements based on the element name. In this example, all the P elements on the web page will be center aligned with a red text color. Next is the CSS ID selector. The ID selector uses the ID attribute of an HTML element to select a specific element. To select an element with a specific ID, write a hash character followed by the ID of the element. The ID of an element is unique within a page. So the ID selector is used to select only one unique element. Here in this example, the HTML element with ID para1 will be blue in color. 
Next, we have the CSS class selector. The CSS class selector selects HTML elements with a specific class attribute. To select the elements with specific class, write a period character followed by the class name. HTML elements can also refer to more than one class. In this example, the P element is styled according to the class center and also according to the class large. One thing to note here is the class or the ID name cannot start with a number. And unlike the ID, the class name is not unique. That means multiple HTML elements can have the same class name. Next, we have the CSS Universal Selector. The Universal Selector selects all the HTML elements on the page. Next, we have the CSS Grouping Selector. If in your CSS code, you have multiple HTML elements with the same style definition, you can group those selectors to minimize the code. To group selectors, separate each selector with a comma. Now what happens when more than one style is specified for an HTML element? In that case, the last read value of that particular element will be used. For example, here we have defined two different styles for the same H1 selector in the external style sheet and the internal style sheet. If the internal style is defined after the link to the external style sheet, then the H1 elements will be orange. However, if the internal style sheet is defined before the link to the external style sheet, the H1 elements will be navy. If an inline style has been defined for the same element, then it has the highest priority and it will override the external and internal styles and all the browser defaults. Last but not the least, we have CSS comments. Comments, as you know, are used to explain the code and may help you when you edit the code at a later date. Comments are ignored by the browsers. A CSS comment starts with a forward slash and asterisk sign and ends with the same in reverse order. Comments can also span multiple lines. In VS Code, you can use the shortcut Ctrl plus forward slash to convert any line into a comment. That's enough for the introduction. See you next week. Thank you for watching the video. Please hit the like button if you learned something. If you are new here, consider subscribing. See you in the next video. Till then, take care. Bye bye.